Welcome to a new video. In this one, we're going to be continuing with the Django React tutorial series. And so this video just addresses a couple of problems that I've seen in the repository and just one or two questions on how to authenticate users as that would kind of just make the whole application a little bit more complete. And so we're just going to add some logic to authenticate users when they want to view the posts. So what you want to do is go to our GitHub page and go to the DJ React repository. And then here you can clone or download this repository to get started with it. So I've got it open here in Visual Studio Code. I've installed the node dependencies, created a virtual environment, installed the Python dependencies, and I've got everything running here. So we can actually open this up in another window. And this is what we see. Now, right off the bat, the first problem that you'll see is if you go to any of the detailed posts, then, so for example, slash two, you're not getting any of the component rendering. So that's something we want to fix. And the reason for this actually happening is based on our URLs. So if we go to DJ React and then URLs, you'll see you've got a regular expression path here. But then for API and admin, you've got a normal path. Now, if you exclude the slash, so if I go to just admin, then you can see it's not taking me to that admin login page. But if I add the slash on the end of that, then it takes me there. Now the same thing is happening with the API URL. If you go to just slash API, it takes you to the React page, but if you add the slash on the end, then it takes you to the API page because that's how it's set up here with the paths and that's how it should be. So what's happening is in our requests, we're not actually including that end slash. We're basically requesting, we're requesting this API route, which means it's not actually the endpoint. So what we need to do is fix those inside our containers. But before we do that, let's actually just open up a few of the links that we need. So the one would be the Django REST framework documentation. So we can go to Django REST framework.org and then here we are. And then the second would be the Django REST auth. So if we go to their website, then here's the read the docs page. And so why I opened this up is so that we can just edit something in our settings. So if we go to settings.py and scroll down, then we see here we have the REST framework default authentication classes. So what I'm going to do is just uncomment the allow any for a second, just so we can see this. And so now when we fix this, we won't have any authentication errors. So let's open up source and then containers article detail view. And I'm just going to view this with JavaScript react. Now here, you can see we don't have the slash on the end here. So when it's saying get, it's going all the way through there, but it's not, it doesn't have the slash. So if we were to copy this and let's just add two on the end there, you see how it just goes here. But if you add the slash on the end, okay, so we get this any, allow any object has no attribute authenticate error. So if we come back, that has something to do with this. So that's, that's because this is a permissions, not a, a an authentication. So we'll need to fix that as well. So let's just comment that out. And if we come back in here, refresh this. Cool. Now you see that if we add two slash, now it actually works. So this is definitely because we didn't add a slash on the end of that. So I'm just going to add that slash there and for the handle delete as well. And we see nothing else here. Then we can do the same to the article list view if there's anywhere we need to fix it. So let's see, doesn't seem to be anywhere. So what I'm going to do is call npm run build and then that will build the project and then we can test it out again. Right, so now if we come back in here and let's go to slash and we'll click on test two. Now this is because we'll need to come back into our paths and if we look at the roots here, you can see that it has articles and then article ID. Now, if we look at the path that we're going to, we, we don't have that articles in there. So we actually are meant to be going to articles slash two, and now we can see that data. So that means that in our list view, 
when we're rendering these components, these articles, that means we'll need to go and edit the article component here. And I'm also going to just change this to be JavaScript React. Then that means that the link here is meant to go to slash articles slash item ID. So we're going to build the project again and then see if this works. Right. So now we can come back here and let's go to normal posts. And if we just refresh the page, we click on test two, it takes us to articles two and it works great. And we can probably try and update this. So let's say just update this, let's click update and it updates. And that's because we didn't specify any permissions here. So we can basically do whatever we want, but that's what we want to fix. Now we want to add some kind of authentication measure so that you have to be logged in. And to do this, it's actually very simple. All we have to do is specify the token of our user in the headers of our request. So let's go and do that now. First, we need to change this setup here in our rest framework settings so that we're using a token authentication. So what I'm going to do is just remove those two comments there and uncomment that. And we can just close that as well. So now if we try this again, now we just get a 401, which is unauthorized. In our request, we're not sending the token as part of the headers. So what we need to do is go back into, let's go to the list view. And here, when we call this get request, we need to pass in the user's token. And we can access that using the state, but we're going to need to use the connect method. So let's go to the app and just grab it from there. So we've got this map state to props. I'm going to copy that, go to the list view and we'll just paste this here. Then the map state to props we will use in the connect method. So let's say connect and we will connect the article list view, passing in map state to props. And then I'm just going to call this token and this will be state dot token. Then we need to import connect which is going to come from React Redux. And so now what we want to do is we want to set the headers of our Axios request. And so to do this, we just have to say axios.defaults.headers equals to this object here. And then we can specify things like the content type. So we'll say content type and we'll say this is application slash JSON and then we'll say the authorization is this dot props dot token because props dot token is going to grab it from here. So we're passing in the token as the authorization. And this is how you would authenticate the request for what you'll find is that when you, you call this component did mount, it's not going to actually have the token yet because it needs to authenticate it from the server, get your token, store the token. So by the time that the component has rendered, you won't actually have a token yet. It will be null. And this component did mount will only occur once. So that means that you're going to authorize with null and that's not going to work. So instead of using the component did mount method, we're going to use the component will receive props. And what that means is that when new props arrives, then take some of the new props and do something with it. So the parameter in here are, is the new props. And instead of then accessing the props, the token from this dot props, you can then access it from the new props. And we know that the token is going to be in this new props because it's going to be updated in our Redux state here. So if you click Redux, then you'll see that, let's say, let's log in here just to show it. So admin, then when you come over here, you can see that the token was created and this is the token. Now that's the state that's being changed. That's the new props. So that's what's going to come in here. It's going to be all the new state that's changed. And so you can then access the token from that. And we'll actually just console log new props just to see it when we get to it. But essentially this way we ensure that when we get new, new props and we have t this token that's being updated, then we can call this get request. But if we don't have the token, then what? Then we're going to have token as null again. So we need to say if new props dot token and then pass everything inside of that. 
so that we ensure if the token was changed, then we can execute this request. And we actually want to do the same thing in our detail view. So what we'll need to do is we need to grab this as well, come to the bottom, and then we need to call the connect method on our article detail. And we need to bring the default headers in there. And we actually want to do the same thing. We want to change our component did mount method into this component will receive props. So I'm going to copy the whole method there, paste that there. And then we just want to cut that out, paste that over there, and we can just tab it in. We can remove the component did mount method. And we're doing the same thing here. So we're getting the new token, setting the default headers. Then we grab the article ID from the parameters and then create that request. And we want to do the same thing for the delete. So we're going to copy that. And so we'll just paste that there. So now we set the default headers yeah, as the token, but this time we're not receiving new props. So this time we'll just say this dot props dot token. And we could ensure a method here. So we just say this dot props dot token is not equal to null. Then we can do all of this. Otherwise, we'd want to show some kind of message that can then handle this. And as another measure, what you could do is you could just remove the delete and update button on the display to say that if the token is null, don't display it. If it is, if it's not null, then you can display those buttons. So you prevent the user from actually executing those actions. And so now we've got the article detail view, which is there and the article list view, which has changed as well. And we'll also want to check that we did the same thing for form.js. So we already have those slashes at the end there, so that's okay. But we'll need to bring in our connect method as well so that we can ensure we set the token in our request. So let's just copy that and bring it into the form. And we can paste this right here because regardless, we are making a request. So we want to set it to the token and we'll do the same thing as we just did. So bring the map state to props and then bring our connect method and then just import connect as well. So we'll need to do it here in the detail view as well. So import connect from React Redux, bring that line into the top here as well and then just fix that as well. Cool, so now we've got the token and we're going to set it in the headers of our request, regardless of whether that's a post or a put. So let's build this and test it out when it's done. So now when we test it out, we are logged out. So we don't get any data when we log in. And let's just add that. Now we see the data come through. And this console log here from article list view, this is the new props that's being displayed. So you can see the token is part of it. And this is just all the other state that's changing. So there's the token that was grabbed from the server when we automatically logged in. And that's the token that was being used to authenticate the request. So if we click on articles two, then you can see there it is again. And that's coming from article detail view. There's the new props. And if we were to log out and log in, oh, refresh it again, then you can see the data doesn't come through. So that's just an example of the kind of requests that you can make based on tokenization. Even though it's really basic, it's basically just ensuring that the user is logged in. It kind of gives you the idea of what to go for. And really all the answers are here in the, in the documentation. So what you'll just want to do is just go to like, authentication and permissions and then if you go down to the Django rest auth then you can see that there or token authentication and then it tells you all about creating tokens and authorization you can see there that's what we passed in in the HTTP header and you can see unauthenticated responses that are denied permission will, will result in an HTTP 401 unauthorized which is what we were getting before and there is a really good example down here if you scroll down custom auth token so this is like for example 
returning the token along with some other information, which is quite useful. So the user ID and the email, and then you can set that up as your custom auth view. Right now we're using the Django REST auth, which is this over here, there it is. And if you want to see more impl implementation of how they do it, then just go to their Angular app or their demo project. And you can follow the same kind of concept that they've done for user authentication, but then just change that to your own models like articles, for example. And so other than that, the application is now working better than it was before. So we fixed a little, a few of those bugs. And now we've added some authentication to it as well to give you an idea of how you can do that and really combine the best of React and Django. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you thought or if there's any other questions or things you think that we should add to this tutorial series. Other than that, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.